everyone. This is Kenlin and welcome to the transmission for Gene Key 16. So the sun has moved into Gene Key 16 on the 26th of May. And I'll be here for five, six days. And this is the Gene Key of Prosperity. There's two of them, 16 and 45 in the Ring of Prosperity. So we're going to talk about how you can become a prosperous person. Now, I love this because prosperity sits outside of duality. It sits outside of abundance and scarcity. So those are just dual frequencies that live in, in, in polarity. And prosperity is this essence of knowing what's yours to do. So it sometimes requires yes, and it sometimes requires no. And that's having the abundance and the scarcity, the scarcity being the no, the sacred no, and the abundance having all these opportunities. But if we follow all of them, we just become scattered and overwhelmed. This is a Gemini sun. This is a Gemini frequency. So knowing what your lane is leads to true prosperity. It's the fragrance of who and what you really are. So Gene Key 16 initiates you into a deeper sense of your individual calling, whereas 45 inside of the ring of prosperity is communal. It's how we become prosperous as a group and actually take this frequency so that all people experience this win-win. And it's important to note that we start we can get there from starting with ourselves. How do we become prosperous? And part of that is our willingness to step into the thing that's ours to do. Now let's presence uh, Gene Key 16's shadow of indifference. This shadow of indifference is important to call out because it's about not wanting to be responsible. And it, and it, can be something like, I don't want to really step into the thing that I'm here to do because I don't want to be responsible for that thing. <laughs> and and we, we all have that at a certain level that we want to have a bunch of excuses and play small and blame other people or blame circumstances because truly, if we were responsible, and this was the thing that I believe it was William James in the, in uh, that, the subtle art of not giving a fuck talked about the story of William James, one of the fathers of psychology. And, and he had like the shittiest life. And he, he said, I'm going to kill myself. Except that before I do, I'm going to take one year out and I'm going to live as if I am responsible for everything that's happening in my life. And, and I'm going to see if that makes a difference. And if it doesn't make a difference, well, then I'm out. And that year transformed his entire life. And he went on to do magnificent things. To, and, and that's like to know the context of the disability on many levels that this human experienced is truly a transformative story. And he began and he became a father, a father, I think five children, um, married, uh, and also known as the father of, I of psychology, maybe positive psychology even. So how amazing is that, this story? And that just popped in. I had, I had read that book, uh, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, a couple months ago. And yet this popped in because there's a level of responsibility that's required in Gene Key 16. And that's not responsible as in a burden, blame, or shame. That's That's misunderstanding responsible response able we are taking a stand that we have a, a say in the matter of life i love that that comes from landmark and that's just that just is so on point it's a grace that we give ourselves that we have a say in the matter of life so switching that paradigm can open up the field of what are you uniquely here to be responsible for? Because gene key 16 and indifference is insidious. It's that way that uh, Malcolm Gladwell talks about this in one of his books, how there was a crime committed and, and 
everybody could hear the crime committed. It was at night and it was in a place like a, like an apartment complex, but everyone thought that everyone else was going to do something about it. So they escaped. They became um, like, not my problem. They were asking the question in sociology later, how could this horrible crime have been committed when there were so many people who heard about it? And so there's this piece of humanity, the shadow frequency that we say, I don't want to be responsible. It's not mine to say, I'm going to let this, my neighbor abuse his kid or his dog or whatever. But when Gene Key 16 is fully activated, it doesn't mean that we have to interfere. It means that we're a stand where we go and that we could graciously and directly bring the energy of the goddess. I've done that many times in my life and in ways that were artful, some inartful. And then I started to learn the mastery of how to uh, confront people in a way that they can receive it. That's a whole other video, but that's a level of mastery. That's a level of choosing that I'm responsible. I remember that moment as I was walking in a grocery store and well, there was actually two, I was in a cafe once and in a grocery store and I could hear the parent speaking to the child in such a way that it was abusive. And I was so knotted up inside. I was so triggered. I was so enraged that I didn't do anything. And when I went home and processed that and processed my grief and my self-judgment for not doing anything, I made a promise to myself. And I made a promise that I would always take a stand for, for those that can't speak for themselves. And I would learn, there was like a secret prayer underneath it that I didn't really know that I prayed until later. And that, that prayer underneath it was, I'm going to learn how to do this in a way that I'm good at it, that I disarm the other person. Because I know if we just get into a fighting match, it's just worse for the child or the animal. But how can I bring love to the situation? And I started to practice and I practiced with the distinction of questions. So I can't say that I'm perfect or always good at it, but I can say that that's my commitment and that, and I'm committed to that level of mastery because I know it makes a difference. And so that commitment takes us out of that shadow band where humanity checks out and it gives itself a shitload of excuses. Like I'm too busy. Someone else will do it. I don't have skill. I don't have time. I don't know. And it calls forth something inside of you that says, you know what? It's your moment to show up. And when we show up and when we give our all to something, to what's in our lane, to that we choose our mastery, we choose our path. And, and it's not it's not a solo choice. This is in conversation with the universe that is continually showing you, directing you, giving you feedback and information. And that dance with the universe is producing the, the letting go. And if you've been following me, this is the practice or this is the, this is what's been happening especially like full moons every month, like the letting go of the not self. What is not yours? What is not your lane? What is interference? What is disempowerment? What is um, codependence? You know, those are all the things that we've just been eyeing. Yes, calling it out. Yes, I get that. <laughs> and I'm making a choice. It's here and I... I'm honoring it and I'm moving toward another frequency. I'm moving toward another way that's got mastery in it, that's got power in it. I'm just thinking right now of um, 
of Carolyn, who now changed her last name to Lovewell. And it was her book, Existential Kink. I don't know if you've ever read that, but it's a great book of how to really embrace that shadow, embrace those negative parts of us, embrace the, the, the terrible parts of us, the gross parts of us that we don't want to embrace so that we can actually use the energy that's been, that's been keeping that thing silent and safe and not seen to, to take that energy, like de-energize that through acknowledgement and through fun and play. And even as she says, getting off on it to transmute it into the energy for our path. So that was for somebody who needs to hear how to play with that negativity or that uh, part of that shadow frequency that comes up in our, in us. So as we begin to step into the thing that we're here to step into, the truth of who we are, making choices, and that was the transmission for the week of the 26th of May, choice making, Gemini wants us to not be so scattered and overwhelmed, but to choose our path, which requires the death of the old. Then we open ourselves up to the gift of versatility. And this gift allows us to play in another dimension. It's, it's really the gift that comes from this level of commitment and mastery. It's when I ran into this doctor who had written some books on hormones and brain chemistry. And he had said to me when I met him back in 2009, he had said, you need to get an MRI, but I'm going to tell you right now you're okay. And I know you're okay because I've been doing this for 30 years, but you also need to get an MRI. And so I did it and I, and I was okay. But that doctor really showed me that that's that instinct. That's how you know, and you verify, right? And you know, you trust your instinct because you've been doing this long enough that the information is in your bones. So when we embark on something new, we have the head knowledge of it. And that head knowledge is like doctors who come out of training and they start their residency. They have a lot of head knowledge and something, some kind of symptom, because you know, a symptom can be something that could be nothing or it could be something huge. They've been trained and now they think everything is something huge. That's the joke of med school, right? Now you're trained and now everything is a problem or a huge disease or whatever. But the more they experience patients and they work with people and they learn, then the more that it, it becomes cellular and integrated, and that's versatility. Then you can use that information off label, so to speak, where yes, traditional medicine has taught me to do it this way, but I'm connecting dots in my brain that tell me, oh, I wonder what would happen. And this is how innovation happens. I wonder what would happen if I did it this way. And we can apply that to every field. That's the innovation that comes from that next level, from being totally, fully committed, all in, in your craft. And that leads to prosperity. That, this is the ring of prosperity. This is individual prosperity because not only are you receiving money, cash money from what you're doing, but you're receiving the prosperity of the fragrance of your path, of what it means as your template. And this is like the most beautiful fragrance of all. It's like having the most incredible rose that has like, otherworldly, like the fragrance is just so vibrant and intense and we have never smelled that smell on earth. It's just amplified rose fragrance. That's what it's like when you're walking your path and you've, and you've elevated in your mastery. And that's really just the gift level of versatility. That's still playing within the bounds of this construct of three space reality. But when we get to the city level, the highest frequency, that architecture in your being where you show up 
and you trust and you have skill has created a beingness. Let's see if I can point to this because it's it's actually really good. It's created a beingness that can then have information drop in that has even nothing to do with your skill. That's where it's called the magical genius. That's Jinky 16, the magical genius. So as Richard Rudd says in this transmission that you could actually get the codes for let's say a piece of music at the piano that you have never played before. Maybe you don't even play the piano. And apparently this is happening. I've just seen a couple ads. Maybe you've seen the ads of uh, Mind Valley where he's talking about this guy who had, he's like an 80 something year old man who has this Gene Key 16 city where he's just able to receive gnosis on playing a piano or whatever it is. And he does that. And what Gene Key 16 says is that is not haphazard. That just doesn't come out of thin air. It's through the step-by-step, including and transcended mastery of your craft. Isn't that exciting? That is like never boring in the world of multidimensional reality. (laughs) So let's be those multidimensional beings. Why not? This is what we're here to activate. Pluto and Aquarius is here to transform that old way of thinking that has us just think 3D and, and, and not magical thinking like, oh, it's just going to magically appear and I don't have to do anything. Yes, there's div- it's, all a, it's all a paradox because it's divine laziness, yes. There's a relaxation, yes. And there's Mars embodiment, skill. Like we're here to do stuff. And we're here to master it. And we're here to put our time in. If you're a generator, you're going to have obstacles coming to you. And those obstacles refine you to have resilience. So that's actually baked into the system. So this is the pathway of putting in your 10,000 hours and then receiving something that's so otherworldly, that's not from this dimension. I love it. I love it. I hope you love it too. And let me know what new things are coming, what, what new pieces are coming to you as we weave together the magical gifts that we're receiving and the way that humanity is evolving.